My family and I purchased over a 40 acre raw piece of land where we built our own family compound, our own family homestead slash family farm. Many people would say that we're lucky, but I would say that we're informed and most importantly, we're blessed. Blessed with the knowledge and the information on how to do a lot of these things. Here's something that the major bank institutions don't want you to know. You don't even have to go to them to purchase a piece of land. And what do I mean when I say this? There is something that is called owner finance property. And even the people that speak about owner finance property aren't properly educated on this thing. There are dozens of different websites that you can go to where owners are looking to sell their properties because they don't want to deal with a realtor. Now, why is this advantageous to you? You can go directly to this owner and work out a deal with this owner where, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you say that you make a 5% down payment and you carry out notes or payments on this particular piece of land. This owner is not concerned with your work history. This owner is not concerned with your credit history. All they care about is your ability to make the down payment and your ability to also pay monthly. This is major whenever it comes to you being able to afford a piece of property. Too many of our people are being left out because they're dealing with the increased prices of groceries. They're dealing with the increased prices of their rental agreements going up annually. And they're not being able to keep their credit up to par because a lot of people are having to tap into credit just to be able to make it, especially in the economical climate that we're living in right now. Now, you still want to approach owner finance property no differently than you would close any other piece of property, meaning you still want to use a closing attorney. You still want to use a title company, someone that's going to serve as a mediator between you and the seller to handle the money and also make sure that the things legally are done correctly. And this is really where owner finance property gets a bad stigma because there have been so many people that have tried to use this vehicle, end up buying some land. They're not dealing with the realtor. They're not dealing with anyone that is going to have their back and try to help them along the process. And they end up buying land from someone that doesn't even own the property in the first place. Well, if you're using the title company and you're also using a closing attorney to be the mediator between you and them, then these things are nigh into impossible to happen. And even if they do happen, then that title company's insurance is going to protect you to make sure that your investment is not lost completely across the board because you gave your money to someone that didn't actually own this property. So long as you take these steps, this is actually the preferred way of purchasing property. And when I say the preferred way, meaning you're going to find many of your better deals this way, plus your credit, even if you do have great credit, your credit won't be affected. Whenever you go out to purchase other things, whether you're purchasing other property or other homes in the future, they typically look into your debt to income ratio. Well, this property will almost be what they call a ghost property, simply meaning it won't even show up on your credit at all because you never use your credit to qualify for this particular piece of property. So again, this is a powerful tool that many people don't know much about or simply don't know enough about to be able to use to purchase land and become a landowner. We're big advocates for first time land and first time property owners. Hence the reason that we created the book, How to Buy Land When You're Broke and Build a Family Farm. Not enough of our people know about these tricks and strategies. These are the reason that we put this with a plethora of more things inside of the book. You can click the link below and purchase the book and hopefully it can serve you and your family greatly on your mission to purchase your first piece of land and your first piece of property. Even if you're trying to buy property with bad credit. My name is Aisha Yar, and this is the 40 Acre Comeback. Forgive me for being dirty, I was outside boxing. We've seen this mask nonsense before. It's about five to 10 years ago. Look how much more details in these masks. Family, it ain't always us. It ain't always the immigrants. Sometimes it be these white supremacists, the dominant society, getting these high quality, probably $2,300 masks that look like, look like us. That brother, look, that mask look like one of us. Like, he could be one of my cousins just with a thicker beard. Don't be disillusioned. Don't think they wouldn't put these things to use. That ain't just for a prop. I apologize if you had an appointment today, but I have to cancel if I also have your car today and I'm supposed to be done with it. Uh, you definitely going to have to wait till tomorrow because uh, I'm definitely not about to be sitting in this. 
Um, I have a mask on, but I, I'm definitely going home. I just want y'all to see what's going on. I'm not sure how close this is to the shop. It don't look super close, but I'm not. I mean, it looks super close, but yeah, I'm just not about to. I'm not risking it. So I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Okay, it's a fire at Biolab here in Conyers, and they just sent out a alert for us to shelter in place and close all your windows because this is a chemical fire. So look at those clouds. That is scary. This morning, a strike is looming at ports along the east and Gulf Coast that could cost the American economy billions of dollars per day and potentially lead to shortages for consumers. A strike of this magnitude um, would cripple the U.S. economy. Dock workers represented by the International Longshoremen's Association are threatening to go on strike Tuesday. The strike would affect 45,000 workers and close to 36 ports from Texas to Maine. Analysts warn a walkout lasting more than a week could lead to major supply chain disruptions. Anything imported could be delayed, including fresh produce, toys, alcohol, and vehicles and parts. Some experts warning, if you need your car repaired, get to the dealership now. If there's a prolonged strike, um, you could see shortages with fresh fruits and vegetables. Obviously, the automotive um, parts sector will be impacted. The Port Workers Union is demanding higher wages and a ban on automated cranes, gates, and trucks. The U.S. Maritime Allowance, representing the ports, claims the union isn't bargaining in good faith. The Maritime Alliance has filed an unfair labor practice charge with the National Labor Relations Board in hopes of getting the union back to the bargaining table before Tuesday's contract deadline. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Now y'all want to see some wild shit? This the Kroger. This the Kroger over here on, on Jimmy Dyes and God doggone... Uh, Oh, you think this is uh, damn, where we at? Harbor Franklin, the new one. The new one. Look at this. You got people on the side of the road. No power. Look. If you're looking for a baby mama today, this might be the way. I'm just saying. Because they outside. You got gas. You might get you some ass. Look at this shit. Oh, it's gonna get lit. They getting gas from over here somehow. Look at this shit, y'all. There goes some groceries. Get her. Oh, ask her. You should have asked her if they taking cash in there. So it really did happen. So <laughs> it's not being covered that much in America. When Netanyahu was called up, the delegates walked out. I'm inviting to address the assembly. They invited him up, watch. His mic went out a little bit. Order, he's gonna call for order. order because they're walking out. Ladies and gentlemen, order. Like the world is standing up in areas and America's just not gonna stand up. <laughs> we gonna sit down. Order, please. Like our country's on the wrong side of history and as the members of this nation, we just gotta feel like we're on the wrong side of history too. We're supporting. Like, un against our will, our tax dollars are supporting the wrong side of history. This is wild. And then we might have to pay for this in the long run. This is crazy.
piece of Mr. I can't say that on here. The crimes that were committed by the West against the rest of the peoples of the earth are their crimes and no one else's. You were responsible for the transatlantic slave trade that ripped millions upon millions of people from their homes, from their families, from their cultures, and you invented the whole concept of white supremacy to try to justify your... We know that we're in a fight. If, if, if they want to fight, then a war is what they're going to get. I've been in Longshoreman for over 23 years. And one thing I do know to be true, gas has went up. The cost of living has constantly went up. And, 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 and throughout these 23 years that I've been on the waterfront, we've only asked for $2, $3, or maybe $5 over the course of the contract. We've done our part. And we're, now we're asking, hey, you do your part. Because during the pandemic, we never stopped working. Imagine that a hospital is looking for a type of blood uh, to be shipped to it. And it's on, on the ship that I'm working on. But it's pouring down raining, lightning. We can't stop working. We got to get that, that box off so that that hospital can continue to drive and, and save the people's lives that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with it. And we, we just want to be respected for it. And, and, and I think it's high time that we demand that. And we, we, we're long overdue. Automation is serious. Yeah. Because when you bring new automation in to take away from our jobs, you don't, you don't make means for that person to have a job. They're, they're, they're pushed over to the side and they can't do their job that they've been accustomed to doing. What we're asking is allow our people to continue to work in this industry without going to get an extra job to make ends meet. Allow us to take care of our families like we've been doing with, with the wages that we currently have in place. Continue that trend. That's all we're asking for. And if we have to sit out two days, two weeks, two months, we're prepared to do that. We not falling for it, Cardi B. We not falling for it, Offset. Sorry. We know the powers that be put y'all up to this. Sorry, we know about everything that's going on. We know the mayor of New York just got indicted and he has ties with P. Diddy. And we know that because right before he got indicted, he gave him the key to the city. We know that Russia is sending threats and NATO is preparing for a huge number of casualties in a potential World War III. We know that there are port workers about to go on strike and that spells doom for America. Because for every day they're on strike, that is supplies that are pushed back for an entire week. Meaning if they go on strike for even four days, it'll be a month of backed up supplies. We know that the current presidential candidates are doing everything they can, pulling out all the stops to win this election. We are locked in as a country, as a people. We are ascending. We see everything that's going on. You can't run from this. No matter who put y'all up to this to distract us, to distract the people, to create drama, you can't run from this. The people see through this. We know everything that's going on, and we are locked in. Sorry. Let's see what you liberals have to say now that a founding trustee of the Heritage Foundation who wrote Project 25 openly endorses Kamala Harris. So is she pro Project 25 now? Yeah, I want to hear you liberals justify that. Grand Rising, everybody. I had to make this video because due to the information that's been coming out from Candace Owens and other sources, this issue needs to be addressed. This situation has destroyed the left's argument in reference to the character of Donald Trump or you don't like him or whatever other reason you have and I say that because a lot of people out there especially my people are voting for Kamala because she's black when a bunch of us have, have been saying no she's not for a while now it's pretty much coming out that her paternal father's side is straight Irish now it's all alleged but the, the way the documentation is coming out it's proven it's, it's being proven that it's true so since that's the case, it's kind of showing that your argument of voting for her for that reason, and we got to make sure that we voting for her because she's one of us and all that. No, that's gone. So now what's your reason for voting for her? But here's the thing, and this is what makes that go deeper. If they have been scrubbing the Internet 
and doing everything they can to cover this up. And it's proven that they were doing everything to make it look like she had Jamaican heritage. That wasn't just her. It was her and the Democratic Party. The reason why I say that is because you factor in her book. When did her book come out? She didn't do that on her own. She had back in to do that. So they want to portray her to be something that she's not. And that for me shows how disingenuous not only she is, but also the Democratic Party. I'm not going to say that the Republican Party is perfect. I'm, I'm never going to say that. But what I will say about Trump is that you know exactly who he is and he don't hide a damn thing. You're not going to be able to dig up something on him or whatever. It ain't no it ain't nothing about being disingenuous. He is who he is. For me personally, I can respect anybody that's like that. I'm talking about anybody that's like that. It doesn't matter who you are. And in this instance, it's frustrating because the sad part is when you talk about the Democratic Party and what it has become, they do they they do their best to play on people's emotions. And when you flat out lie, for me personally, that's a problem because it makes me look at you differently. When I think about Malcolm X and how he talks, how he talks about how he talked about the liberal in that speech, that's exactly what's going on. And for me, it's very, very frustrating because so many people fall for the okie doke and the banana in the tailpipe. So anybody who gets it, y'all know who you are, I salute you. If anybody comes in these comments and you refute anything that I'm saying, I know what I'm dealing with, I know where you stand. I'm not even going to respond to you because guess what? There's no reason to. Because your outrage should not be on my video and in my comments. You need to be calling out the Democratic Party and the Kamala Harris um, Biden campaign because this was a plan. And that to me is where things things should go when it comes to your vitriol and all that shit. It's honestly and truly sad. When you got truth tellers out here like myself that that consistently <coughs> uh, we do our best to just put the information out there. That way you can go check for yourself. But you want to come at us sideways. All I can do is shake my head. But I also know there's people out there that are just confused. That's why I don't stop. I'm always going to put the information out. Because in my personal opinion, it's the right thing to do. That's just me. That's how I roll. That's how I operate. I've always been like that. I would never. I'm not going to force anybody to do something they don't want to do. I'm just going to give you the information. Because bottom line is, you got left, you got right, and then you got the middle. So many people are in the middle. And they going back and forth like, which one should I rock with? And I always tell people, you go with your gut. But when truth starts to come out. You can't deny it. And that is the reason why. Like, I, And I told people this. I made a video saying this. With her running. She was a flawed candidate. Because there's so much stuff about her. People do not know. And now is the chance for everything to come out. And when things come out. That people were not going to like it. This man has been campaigning for eight plus years. She had four months. So guess what? She's open to every bit of scrutiny that's out there. Ain't nothing misogynistic. Ain't nothing racist or none of that. She's running for the highest office in the land. The same way they come at him, they're going to come at her. You cannot take that shit personal because that's what you signed up for. Period. I don't want to hear misogyny. I don't want to hear racist miss me with all of that and now that stuff is starting to come out don't deny it because guess what this woman will get a hundred percent
favorable ratings, whether it's on the news, whether it's on social media. She get 100% positive and Trump gets 92% negative. That is a problem. So like I've been saying since the beginning, call it even across the board. If you don't want to do that, you show who you are and you also show your hypocrisy. The one thing about me, and it's for anybody who knows me personally, I will call you on your shit no matter what, whether we cool or whether we're not. And I expect people to do the same because I tell the truth. And I've been like this since I was a kid. I've had friends tell me this for years. Yo, you you too loyal and too truthful to a fault. I don't give a damn because no matter what, everybody knows exactly where I stand. My character and my name is all I got. And I cherish that shit. And whenever I make a mistake, whenever I learn something new after believing something, I will come out and say, I made a mistake. My bad. I don't have a problem with that because my pride and ego does not dictate my life. So for all of y'all, bottom line is give that same vitriol, anger, whatever you want to call it to the people who have been lying to you. I'm not one of those people. I'm an ally. So I know y'all not going to do it because pride and ego, you let that control your life. So I'm going to wait and see what's up. To all the people out there who are truth seekers, truth tellers, conspiracy realists, and not theorists, I salute you. I talked to someone the other day and they said that Trump never smiles. And then it dawned on me, the reason that people aren't resonating with Kamala Harris right now is because she's always cackling at something. Most people feel in the United States, as it pertains to our condition, what the fuck is so funny? Gas prices, food, housing, all of these things are super high and she over here laughing. What the fuck is so funny? And most people feel like they want somebody serious at the helm of the leadership of this country to handle their very serious problems. Oh, literally, I haven't seen one video where Kamala wasn't cackling. And it's not just the fact that she's laughing, it's the fact that nine times out of ten she's laughing at something that nobody else in the room found comical. I mean, at least let the joke be funny. It comes off as disingenuous when it's not. But that translates into everything that we would see her sit at the table for. At the table with war generals and other heads of state. <laughs> Bitch, he got his finger on a red button. Kids are the primary demographic that you gotta tell to stop playing. I feel like I just made an argument for the people that support Kamala Harris being petulant children. That was not my intent. I do not support politics or candidates. I don't know. Kamala Harris is just the vice president. She can't do anything. Look what the president had to say about that. The single thing that I did that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to delegate her responsibility on everything from foreign policy to domestic policy. Look, the one thing we have in common, she and I, two basic things that are different, uh, de departed from some Democrats, some past Democratic notions. We thought the way to build this country and build the economy, which was left in shattered and tatters, mm -hmm. yeah. was to build the middle class. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. to, to, build, to build the middle class from the bottom up. Not only are you guys misinformed, not only are you guys misinformed, but he said Kamala Harris was able to do all of this stuff that he's able to do as a vice president. Everything from foreign policy to domestic policy, what's going on at the border and just crime, <laughs> like inflation, like everything. So basically everything that this woman is saying that she's going to do whenever she's in office, she's already in office because they already hit um, Joe Biden with Amendment 25. If you don't know what Amendment 25 is, this the president is taken out, he's incompetent or he gets sick or he's just not fit to run the United States, the vice president and the Democratic Party, they can do this on their own. They could vote him out. That's what's been happening. <laughs> Don't you ever know you haven't seen President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in the same room? Back then with Obama, they were always hanging out. But now, now, you never see the president and the vice president together. That's crazy. What's going on? The Obamas, Nancy Pelosi, and Kamala Harris, they all got together to kick this old man out of office. Right now, he's just showing face. But before he leaves, he's going to make sure he embarrasses her. And he also 
got to make sure he embarrasses the Democratic Party. He's trying to say it, Joe, and he values himself above, yeah, yeah. above yeah. everything right. else. Well, I'm but not I, sure I he do... even understands what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I, well. I do have a question for you, Mr. President. This mm. year marks the 30th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act, which you call your proudest legislative accomplishment in all the years you served as senator, vice president, and president of the United States. You brought up the 30th anniversary of violence against women's act and how they support it they say they support it so much but that same act it's act 7909 it's violence against women by illegal aliens act there was 266 votes that says yes pass it 158 votes that says no don't pass it wouldn't you imagine 158 democrats said no, like, they said no, let's not pass that act. Let's let these illegal aliens do whatever they want to our women in the United States and they will still be grant granted citizenship. They still will be treated like human beings. Just the same people that were calling Joe Biden unfit to serve. It was really hard to watch uh -huh. um, and it kind of pains me to say this today, but I think President Biden needs to step down um, and be replaced. You do. If, if, we, if we want to defeat Donald Trump in November, I absolutely think that. And I think Biden's team saw it coming. I think that's why they pushed for an earlier debate uh, so they'd have time to change course if needed. But they've got to act fast, and I would implore those closest with the president to have the very hard conversations they're going to need to have and not just for political ramifications, for humanity, for his integrity, and for his legacy, which, I mean, that's, that's all on the line right now. And Whoopi Goldberg? Whoopi, you're two-faced for what you be doing. Slandering that man, knowing damn well, y'all were great friends. That's sick. She Sorry. likes me. She even put I, me I in do, a movie. I was just gonna say. She put me okay, in a movie, yes, right? A long friends. time ago. So exactly. How much should I judge? Nothing. Like they right? say in the garden. <laughs> Donnie, I love you. Donald, I'm telling you. you. And they're trying to humanize him and change your idea about who this guy is. Don't fall for that. Trump, you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about Trump. What's up, family? So, well, well, well. I came across a video that showed that Biden literally just made a political contribution to the Trump campaign. And as vice president, there wasn't a single thing that I did that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to delegate her responsibility on everything from foreign policy to domestic policy. Homeboy said, listen, y'all not about to sit here and dump all of this shit going on with this country on me. Gamela could have helped out as well. And rightfully so, because a lot of y'all love to sit here and say, oh, well, you know, this was all Biden. You know what I'm saying? She couldn't do nothing. She didn't do anything. And I'm really glad that he making it plain as day that he did not act alone. He had a partner in crime throughout this whole ordeal. A lot of y'all could really like hush up and y'all be talking about, oh, well, she didn't, she couldn't do nothing. She, her hands were tied. Cause while she out here gallivanted about, she's still in the office and still in the position. In fact, we've been seeing her a whole lot more. We've been seeing the whole damn president. He's still president now. Let's keep that in mind. I just thought that that was interesting. Uh, you know, it was just more, it, it was more interesting than me seeing him put on the actual MAGA hat. This one right here, ooh, mm. Only I could be a fly in the wall of the White House when that was said. I ain't mad at him, no, because he feels slighted. He probably feels some type of way. Like, y'all wouldn't even let me to continue my campaign. Y'all just pushed me out of the way. On top of the fact of all the lying that she was doing, talking about that he's fine and he's doing a good job, you knew damn well that that man didn't know what the hell he was doing. So I just thought that that was interesting. But hey, let me go ahead and get my popcorn, honey. This is about to be a hell of a show. Trump or Harris? Oh, Harris all day long. Harris. Why? Because she's black. <laughs> because she's black. A black female. Okay. Yes. So tell me something you like about Trump and something you don't like about Harris. Oh, there's nothing I like about Trump, but hey, if if Obama chose Biden, he was good enough, and Biden chose Harris, she's good enough for me. What's your biggest policy that you're looking forward to that Kamala's going to implement? Hopefully student loans. I'm a nurse, so I want that. So 
So what you mean as far as student loans? Um, pay something. Take oh, something away from okay. me. But yeah. as far as like immigration, you know, the economy, any policies you're looking forward to from Kamala? For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have uh, <laughs> the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations. Do you know the opening word of the indictment says 2014? 2014, they've been, been investigating him for 10 years and they still allowed him to become the mayor. So that video is hilarious. Go watch it because you need to laugh. A couple things here. His scumbaggery was always very evident to me and lots of other people. It was always like, how did he get here in front of our faces? A couple things here. I feel like they're trying to make black men the face of like usually white male crimes and criminology racketeering. And I said this last year. Now, did he go in now for the entertainment industry? Industry, there's a whole industry behind him and executives that go well above him. He's a minion. This guy, we're gonna have Kamala Harris soon for the face of genocide. It's like they're trying to evolve this idea that we're the criminals and anywhere we go, that they perform criminality in all portions of society, anything we let them do. And also clearly we could say they were waiting to clean up more stuff, and implicate other people with this investigation. But you let him access more corruption by putting him in such a powerful position. Are we gonna talk about that? I'm just starting to realize almost everything in our society is a criminal enterprise. And this makes me think of Donald Trump because I always think of him as just that, like his own walking crime show, true crime. I'm always like, how many people does it take to keep a man like that in front of the public and in everyone's face and becoming the president? How many favors are behind this? Just also mirrors the situation that just happened in Missouri with that innocent man being executed. It's really like, yeah, so all of you guys near the top, you are corrupt. There's not really any way to kind of look away from that right now. Although it seems the society is, I've actually gotten really depressed this week realizing that most of the society would rather joke and get into the salacious details of like celebrity trafficking than they would realizing that their whole lives have been trafficked. Like entertainment is a huge part of the set design of our nation as is music, as is media. And we're starting to realize like people in these positions are all being used to like obscure reality, create a false reality for us all, create a culture that does not need to exist. And like this brings into profile that our whole life is fake. And I feel like no one's realizing this. This is what we've been looking for, but no one's very excited about it. And they're slowly like trickling us these things. And I don't think we, if we realize like if Diddy's able to like keep artists from being in the music industry, like politicians do the same thing. There's a Diddy in every sphere. There's a Trump in every sphere. There's an Eric Adams. But behind those people are much more powerful men, more than likely. And a couple handfuls of women, of course, who are far worse than the people you're seeing and who are the ones who are actually benefiting from all the uh, orchestration of their little minions that we're able to see. I know people think like, oh, Diddy's so powerful, Trump is so powerful. But when you really look at it, these people are just kind of like middlemen for higher up more sinister people well smarter people not more sinister like yeah they're arresting people directly around eric adams but there's clearly a lot of people who we're not never going to hear about that are clearly implicated in him becoming the mayor also how long do you investigate someone for before you like actually clack down on them like you should have clacked on him before he got into the mayor's office and then they're like supposed to be trusted but it's like oh you're in showing inc how incredibly untrustworthy you actually are Ugh. And the pagers in Lebanon, like things are getting a little unreal here. And I don't, I don't feel like it's like clicking with everyone. I hope it is. I just don't feel it because everyone's waiting. Like, who else is on the list? What, else, what tapes are there? It has to be all of them. There can be no one who is safe. It all just started made me realize how like actually buttoned up this is. Like I've known this for a long time, but I didn't know it was this sort of overt, I guess. So close. So right there. Like the thing with the governor in Missouri, like he's very closely linked to the crime, the original crime that he's put someone to death for and then eric adams like they've been watching you and like everyone around you kind of knew this was gonna happen it seems like 2014 in new york city nah everybody knew about that if this was like topeka kansas i might think of this differently but new york city come again dallas police officer convicted of murdering botham john in his own apartment six years ago will soon be eligible for parole the case attracted national attention as you probably know if you've been around here sparked protests around our city our trevor sahaki tonight speaking with botham john's family ahead of Amber Geiger's parole hearing. She's caused my family tremendous harm, tremendous hurt, tremendous pain, and she ought to remain where she is. Nearly six years to the day after Botham John was shot in his apartment in Dallas, his killer, Amber Geiger, is up for parole on Monday on what would have been Botham's 33rd birthday. She mm -hmm. needs to serve her entire 10 year term which is way below um, a sentence that one receives for murder. A murder of an innocent man in the comfort of his home doing nothing wrong. Geiger, a Dallas police officer at the time, told authorities she confused both of John's apartment for her own. Her body camera was not recording during the shooting because she was off duty. Zarita Hall is a professor at the University of Texas Arlington and a former parole officer. 
She said letters from Botham's family would be considered during a parole hearing. Uh, this man was murdered. Uh, he was killed in his own, own home. So I would imagine uh, letters of support of her staying in prison would probably be pouring in. Geiger was convicted of murder and sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2019. She appealed the conviction but lost her appeal two years ago. She will go before the parole board. There's a panel of people. They'll ask her questions, um, you know, about how she changed and what she thinks about you know, all these things, right? Hall said Geiger may not appear in person and the board may just review the paperwork. So public concern can definitely be a factor. Support letters for the uh, support letters for the victim, support letters for uh, the person that's incarcerated. We have reached out to Geiger's attorneys multiple times for comment, but have not heard back. Trevor Sahaki, CBS News, Texas. I woke up to Marcellus Williams' son on the news telling people, if my dad was a peaceful man, he won't peep. Man, shut the fuck up. Shut up, nigga. They had you on the news quicker than they had your fucking daddy on there telling the world that they about to kill him. And you, on this motherfucker, telling everybody to be nice. Somebody pinch me. Because this got to be the 1950s. It got to be. That's all the time I'm going to give you black man who watched your daddy get his ass murdered in front of the world. And all you had in you was to tell everybody to be peaceful. I'm done talking to you. I want to talk about that white man who went into that motherfucking judge chamber and blew his shit off. I won't talk to him. Somebody with some strength. You hear me? Somebody who got something going through his fucking bones that say, I don't give a fuck about what you got going on. If you touch my people, I'm doing something to you. I just want to congratulate that white man. Yeah, I want to congratulate that white man. Me being a black woman who's never in my life dated a white man. See, I'm going to point that part out because y'all like to get on here and say, oh, white, y'all, the black woman love to praise the white man. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you what you really did, nigga. Y'all sat on y'all ass and been the weakest motherfuckers to the point where the white man is the man. Let's leave it there. Like, you literally got black women sitting back watching y'all be the weakest motherfucking lynx. And y'all don't want them to be intrigued with strong, powerful men. Now, the fucked up part is that they power will come from standing on the necks of black men. But you motherfuckers won't get their motherfucking boot off your shit at all. What you expect? I mean, the women fight for you. You fight the women. <laughs> you feel me? Shit, a smart black woman somewhere cuddled up in a motherfucking soft era. Alone or with a white motherfucker foot in the bill. You're not finna tell me she wrong for that. Now, if she, when, she get, when we get to the day where we look across and we can see the kings and the queens and the gods and the goddesses and they look like us, then I got a problem with it. I, I got a problem with what you going to the other side. But right now, why you motherfuckers don't show every, every time you get the opportunity to show that bitch I run, I'm I'm the king. I'm the god. You get on the motherfucking news and you be submissive. This is what I call submissiveness. That black man got on that motherfucking news and he submitted to the killing of his father. I submit this. I am okay with this. That's what y'all want black women to do too, ain't it? I know you cheat, you lie, you, you might kill me, but I submit. Fuck out of here. So family, as you can see, the reason why I put these two videos back to back, Amber Geiger's about to get out. You know it's hotter. Oh, she did us so wrong. She should never get out. But your son was hugging this broad. We saw this in real time. And shout out to Jason Black. He said they were going to try to let her out early. And sure enough, they tried to. This is the response we need to have going forward. You saw that sister was saying, Marcellus Williams' uh, uh, son, 
peace and hugs and tranquility. Basically, F you. We're not doing it no more. Your father was just murdered. State sanctioned murder. Because they could. Not because he actually did anything wrong. DNA proved he didn't. And you're kumbaya, kundalini spirits, let's hug and pray and all that. Damn that. That's the energy we need to be on going forward. Letting these little step and fetch Negroes know we don't give a damn who your son is. We not sticking standing by injustice and let your child talk crazy because what happens is that puts a target on our bikes, on our children's backs, aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews, whatever. We're not letting it go. People portraying white people as being racist and told and told that we hate uh, black people. Um, one thing right now, they're trying to misconstrue things here, and the Haitian people are trying to act like they're, they're uh, African-Americans that have been here and born and raised here. They're trying to portray themselves as a black American. They're not black Americans. You know? And I want to know why, why are these people being coddled and, and pampered and given us beautiful life, a life better than I live, off my tax dollars? You know, what, what, what's going on with that? And, and there's a couple of things, a couple of rumors I want to know about, about um, Haitians buying guns and pawn shops around here, having people, um, citizens, go in to, to shops. And, and buy a bunch of guns and distribute them out. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that's true, that needs to be stopped. You know, they, I don't know. Why do they need guns? Why are they scared of? Man, they're getting, they're getting a special, the red carpet treatment, man. This is wrong. You know, our, we are second class citizens. The citizens that were born here, we become second class to a bunch of people that don't even belong here. A bunch of chaos has come to our city because of the immigrant situation. If the, we, we took on a problem from a third world country that is not our problem. Why, 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 why are we uh, taking care of this and supporting this, you know? Why don't these people go home and fight for their own country they, they seem so proud of? You know, instead of coming over here crying and, and getting a bunch of free shit. You know, that's the that's wrong. Off the ta off all those all the people that pay taxes. And then they want to turn around and start hating on us and calling us racist. There's something really wrong with that picture. Oh, black Americans don't know where they came from, so. And that's on hoodoo. That's on hoodoo. Like, I get so many people that, you know, they come to African traditional religion, they immediately want to initiate into Isheshe and voodoo and 21 divisions and Kondoble. And I think that is beautiful. And I pray that you find everything you need whenever you do initiate. But for me and myself, I am good right here. People be like, oh, no, I don't want to initiate the such and such and such and such. No, I am good right down here. And that is on Hoodoo. You're just mumbling a bunch of nonsense. It's if it's a real. Yako, you have to see Jackie's sister, mommy, dad, crazy as Yako, you that on the uh, you know, daddy rest is 13 and dead. Wax ash it said, wacky, so say I did. Sister, say yak, mommy, dad, okay? Period. Yeah, this is what Connor said. It's like, y'all have all this time to get free money, free loans, and we don't get that back at home. Yeah, but, but y'all get but, that when y'all come so, here, though. Exactly, and guess what? We're right here, and y'all are still uh, there's here. A lot you are right here, and we are right here. Excuse me, I'm not really understanding. So you're saying that Jay-Z is like below Africans. You're saying Oprah Winfrey is below Africa. You're saying all these millionaires that we have, these black millionaires. It's funny how you get to pick and choose who you seem to identify as black American. Like you just overlap LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, all of these Simone Biles, and you just want to choose the poorest of the particular community. You know we could do that as well, right? You know we could look at the poorest communities in Africa and identify all of you as the same thing. You do know that. This is one of those particular things that I like to say is stop allow Africa. Stop allowing people who do not understand history 
and do not have the education to talk for you guys. You will, we will wrap circles around them. It's embarrassing. Just say you don't understand history, sis. Just say you don't know what you're talking about. Just, it's not hard. Just say you don't know what you're talking about. You are ignorant. Just say that. Just say that. Don't say that we are thinking. You are. You don't represent Africans. And if you do, let's not talk about the identity of Africa on a global standard. Are you from? I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaica. Just like a no, no, no. Hold on. Just like somebody from Jamaica, they're not going to say what country in Africa they're from. Somebody in Haiti is not going to say what country from. Are they going to say they're Haitian? Because they were closer from what is it called, the Triangle Slave but Trade. But when they, when you ask them that question. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a definitive answer. That's because they're already in their own community of Caribbeans and Haitians. Jamaica. they're all like in one bowl. Just as but far black as Americans are in their own but bowl the, as well. The like, that's why the, I, that's I normally don't speak on stuff like this because I don't like diaspora war conversations. But the obsession that some Africans have with African Americans are is it's literally killing me. Like it's you're doing too much at this point. One, we're lazy. We're not lazy, babe. There's black billionaires. Billionaires would it be? black millionaires there's black doctors there's black lawyers there's black like there's plenty of black people getting their education i'm getting my master's right now hello have you ever been to an hbcu and see the graduating class of black african-american doctors everybody getting a white coat you've never seen that before now me personally i'm not about to be a doctor because that's not what god called me to do but i'm getting my master's in business because i'm a businesswoman two this whole we don't know where we come from thing babe it's been almost 600 years okay 600 years my great 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 grandmother and probably more greats was born right here period if y'all to turn a really sad and sick situation and flip it around on us and make it seem like there's something wrong with us because of what happened insane but anyways we know exactly where we come from to y'all this country is just a place to go when you need to come up on some money but this is our home this is our culture our dances our music our sound, our style, everything that you love about America, that's why y'all keep coming back, we started. And in fact, the opportunities that y'all have, the, the whole reason why y'all are even allowed to be over here is because of us. Because if we didn't fight for certain rights, if we didn't fight for certain things, if our ancestors weren't getting um, beat up and all this other stuff by people in the street, then you wouldn't even allow, you wouldn't even be allowed to be over here. Like, you, do you see the irony in that? But yeah, this is a country. This is our home. This is the home that we built. The reason why you're on a podcast right now is because black men started it and they're giving you a platform. And even still in that in said platform, you still feel comfortable enough to spew your negative racial stereotypes and be disrespectful in their face. And it's, it's so like acceptable to be disrespectful to African-Americans to where they, they literally, it goes right over their head how ironic it is that you're on their platform and you're gonna steady disrespect them and their culture. I don't understand that. And then lastly, this is the last thing and I'm done. I swear I'm gonna wrap it up. It's only African Americans, only. They, have you ever seen an African interact with a white person? They're the sweetest person in the world when they talk to white people. And that is what is crazy. And I'm not trying to group all y'all up, but it's it's a large percentage of y'all when they talk to white people they're so polite they're so forgiving they're so understanding they're so oh you know it's like they have a whole level of respect for them we're in the same country they don't go up to white people and be like oh well you don't know where y'all from because they weren't even originally here they have this big this huge respect for white people but they feel like they can come over here and they feel like they have this superiority complex. So not only can I treat white people better than you, even though we look just alike, but I can disrespect you in your face and then disrespect the history of why you're here, your ancestors, and be like, oh, well, you don't know where you come from. The person that you're being super friendly to, his ancestors is the reason for that. That's insane to me. They, and I'm gonna just end it like this. If you don't like African-Americans, don't be here you know what i'm saying like i don't understand how hard it is like if i felt a certain way about ghanaians and nigerians i'm not about to go to ghana 
and I'm not about to go to Nigeria because I don't like them or I don't respect them. Simple as that. Pay attention to this comment right here. Stop infantilizing these people. They know our history, but they don't care, which is why I have no problem taking it to the gutter with them whenever they start talking slick. First, I respect that. And you're entitled to do that 100%. But me, I can't do that. I represent a lot of different people throughout a black America itself. And I can't talk crazy. I have to be educational, informative, because I feel like this is what they want. And when I say this, I do not mean Africa. I mean pale. I believe, personally believe, that this is just a decoy. We're dealing with colonized, institutionalized people who've been dominated by other particular people for a very long period of time. So all the information that they have, yeah, it is their fault for not being educated. I understand that, but I'm not going to resort to fighting somebody who is below my below my class and weight when it comes down to these particular situations. I have to just feel embarrassed for all the other Africans who this person is speaking on the behalf of. And keep in mind that it's not all of them that think like that, but all the people that are educated or open-minded are just not on the internet. The OGs, the older generation that's actually mindful and know what they're talking about. They're not on social media. So we can just sit there, bring back shame and embarrass them. They're diabolical. But for me, I always do it from an educational, informative message because there are other ethnicities that can watch and learn from us. We are not barbarians. We are not diabolical. We are educated, informative pioneers. As a conscious African, I must push back against this constant display of ignorance by some African people against African Americans. African Americans must know that this is not the sentiment of a majority of African people. The constant disregard and disrespect of African American accomplishments, of their struggle, of their grace, of their excellence, of their fortitude must stop. It is embarrassing, it is heartbreaking. African Americans must know that this is not the truth. If you ever get a chance of visiting the continent, if you've ever visited the continent, you will know that you are loved, you are supported, and you are embraced as a member of this African family because you are a member of the African family. And this display of ignorance by Africans, especially those Africans who have settled, decided to settle on this soil, on American soil, must understand that it is because of the struggle, it is because of the sacrifices of African Americans that we are able to be here, that we are able to enjoy these things. And so you are exposing your own ignorance speaking this way. Stop it. May I ask where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, South Sudan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm African, but honestly, I like Americanized African men. Mm. He's just a little too African. Not in any insulting way, so honestly. What made you say he's too African? I think the strong facial features, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And which part of Africa are you from? I'm half Kenyan, half Ghanaian, so okay. I'm like East and West. Okay. She said his features are too African, honey. <laughs> Ooh, and she wants someone that looks like our men in America. Why not, honey? Baby, what? Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> I mean, you know, look at these features. Why wouldn't she want one of our men that looks like oh, beauty at its finest? We look good. Our men, our women, oh, honey, what? <laughs> Why not? We look good. We look good. <laughs> Why would they not want to look like us? We're born with it. The simple fact that this young lady in the original video made a distinction that she didn't want the man's African features. She prefers the features of those of us in America because our features are totally different, which proves that we are totally different people. Huh? Even people in modern day Africa are actually our people. And she's probably one of our people because I know the Kenyans, the Kikuyus, they're Israel. There are. There are people. Not everybody in Africa is an African. Some of you are our people over here. The Lemba people. These are my people. Ten of the tribes of Israel are in America. Only two of them were dispersed throughout the world. And that's you people in Africa who think that you're Africans and you're not. All the people who come from the Lembas are our people. The Ebos the, the, are also Israelites. 
you're not Africans. You are our people. And y'all were sent over there to modern day Africa in the slave trade because it was told in reverse. She recognizes her own people. Which tribe do I belong to in Africa? Don't you dare ever disrespect me, my ancestors, or my people again by calling me an African. The name, the title, the classification that was forced upon my people by the Caucasoids who came over here and colonized us. The same people that went over there to Africa and colonized you, cut off your limbs in the Congo, apartheid in South Africa, stealing your resources, gave you this monstrosity and said it was going to save you. Like, please help me understand what interest do your colonizers and enslavers, your oppressors have in saving you? What can they or are they willing to save you from? Common sense is not common, but I'm going to need you to use this thing right here. Their only purpose is to do this. History, they're the ones that gave you that version of history that my people over here in America are from Africa, modern day Africa at that. Sadly, people who look like us are the only people on this earth who allow their enemies to come in and tell them who they are and give them their history, give them a God to worship that looks like them, the same people who are oppressing you and stealing from you. You are so gullible to believe them and listen to everything that they say. Like their word is gospel. You hold on to everything that they say and they give you without questioning it. It's only people who look like us. So tell me, which tribe am I from? Huh? Those of you who love your oppressor's version of history so much, help me understand why the old mounds and pyramid sites are found in the United States. Huh? Thousands of years older than the ones in modern day Africa or the place that they call Egypt. Okay, geniuses, here's another one. If modern day Egypt, which is in Giza, is the ancient comedic land, then please help me understand why Sudan's pyramids are far numerous and even older than the ones in Giza, the so-called ancient Egypt, huh? Also, please explain to me why those Arabs in modern day Egypt do not have a drop, not even an ounce of Egyptian DNA, but those of us in America who they call African Americans, we are the ones who actually have ancient Kemetic DNA. So if Africa was the motherland and that's where all of us came from, then, then, then why is the ancient DNA in America? Huh? Please help me understand. <laughs> People with our hair textures and similar phenotypes were all over the earth. We are the original people of this earth. We were everywhere throughout the four corners of the earth before the pale skinned people came down and started colonizing us and stealing everything from us and giving us a God to worship that looks like them. Prior to the Americas being colonized by the Anglo-Saxons, it was notated when explorers came here to the Americas that there were dark complected people who were actually from Africa. They were immigrants from Africa, as you can see here, that were scattered throughout North and South America and cohabitated with some of the indigenous they tribes. They described them as being immigrants from Africa and they also described their skin complexion as being very dark. These dark skinned Africans mixed with some of the native tribes here in America. This entity that's credited for slave trafficking us and sex trafficking us all the way through Europe and into Africa he made notations himself that number one, there was gold here. So we did have rich resources. And they even talked about the people in, in the Caribbean as being the aboriginals and their dark skinned people. Another thing I've shown millions of times, the true American Indian, the aboriginal of America has coarse black hair, brown and copper colored skin complexion. This talks about our features, our facial features, for the reason why you commented on that video where the young African girl who said that she's part Ghanaian and Kenyan said that she doesn't, doesn't want an African man that looks too African. She likes the American features far better, see? And they notated our features. They said that our nose was different, our whole face was different, our face structure was and different. Our features were bold and free and it distinguished us from other natives of other parts of the world. Not only are our features in America different from other natives all over the world, but our skulls are totally different as well. Wake up, stop regurgitating false history and learn the truth about who everybody is. Africa, are you from? 
I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaica, just like a no, no, no. Hold on. Just like somebody from Jamaica, they're not going to say what country in Africa they're from. Somebody in Haiti is not going to say what country from. They're going to say they're Haitian. When they, when you ask them that question, mm -hmm. they're not going to have a definitive answer. That's because they're already in their own community of Caribbeans, the Haitians, Jamaica. They're all like in one bowl. Just as but far Black as Americans are in their own bowl as well. Like. They know Black American culture is real. The reason they're saying it's not is because they have assimilated to it and they have appropriated it and they don't want to give respect to where it's due. If you go up to a black person who grew up in America or the UK and you say black American culture is not your culture, Jordans, that's not your culture, rap music is not your culture, that will upset them because it will give them a, a sense of an identity crisis. They all know black American culture is real and what you guys need to do is call it out every single time you see it. This shirt of mine, that's black American culture and I know it's not part of my culture, but guess what? I acknowledge it and I give respect to where it's due. I still love it. You're still not gonna stop me from saying nigga, but guess what? I can say it, cause I'm black. However, I'm still gonna give credit to where it's due. Black American culture is real. It's not the same as Nigerian culture. It's not the same as black British culture. It's not the same as all these other cultures. And all these other cultures have also appropriated heavily from black American culture and they will never acknowledge it. It makes them upset. Why? Because it gives them a sense of identity crisis. Call it out every single time you see it if you're black. I think that Marcellus Williams did murder Alicia Gale, and I think you should too. The most dangerous slave of them all is the one that's raised inside the house. And they do not feel the chains because those chains are in their mind and mouth. He can justify outside atrocities with gifts received just for himself. And he does not consider that twist of fate that would see him in the shoes of someone else. And true to his training, he would be ashamed to see the situations he sees his brothers and sisters in. And true to his training, he'll be convinced that he's somehow better than them. And true to form, he will shovel the gold to add to his master's hoard. Used as a small connection to pull the strings for his master's shield and sword. And one day, he will realize that he's just a tool being used. And will be cast down on his first mistake when supremacist mates have their point to prove. So here's my message to you, my mediocre Uncle Tom. In the end, it won't be us but them that will remind you where you're from. Now you see this tether? The reason why I put it back to back is because initially I was like, oh, he only loved him. Black Americans, hey, don't check that. And then surely, shout out to his brother. I don't know what his brother is, but shout out to him. Oh, I think he did it. So damn the DNA. He had to do it because it's a white woman, huh? That's why I try to do these things. What I do, I try to curate the content so it flows a certain way and it makes sense, family. Because he would have got away with it had it not been for, I think it might be a foundation of black American. He's in black and white and I really can't see the top of his head. <laughs> Even though I'm bald-headed my dag himself, I got old pictures you can see out of the hairline. Uh, that one clip would make it seem like he's valid. But you see the next one, he's like, oh, okay, you're tethered. It is what it is. Why do black Americans keep asking me if it's safe to visit Mexico? You're a black person living in the USA. I think you're asking the wrong questions. Don't let the US propaganda get to you. We don't have sundown towns. Hi, Guatemalan here and black American, but I don't need to be of that region to tell you why black people do our due diligence before traveling anywhere, including to places like Mexico or Guatemala. Because there's this thing called global raciality, thus globally anti-blackness. But let's not get into the global sphere. Let's talk about Mexico specifically. And you may be thinking, why is a Guatemalan talking about Mexico? Well, there's a lot of shared histories and cultures to keep it short, not to mention they are right next to each other, separated only by a nation state border, which is a colonial abstraction. So the reality is anti-blackness and anti-indigeneity is a part of the cultural fabric of Mexico. For those who may not know, there's this thing called the casta system, which dates back to colonial times, which positioned black and indigenous people at the very bottom. And those legacies of that hierarchy are still alive today. How so? Well, African descended and indigenous people in Mexico and Guatemala continue to fight for their sovereignty and equity. For example, Maya movements in Mexico are actively fighting for indigenous sovereignty, land rights, environmental protections, cultural preservation, and more. And Afro-Mexicans who have long been marginalized and excluded from national narratives alongside indigenous groups were officially recognized for the first time in the 2020 census. Activists have been fighting for greater representation and recognition of Afro-Mexican rights, pushing for access to basic services 
services like access to education and healthcare in their communities. So when you tell Black Americans don't fall for the propaganda, the implication is that we're blindly believing something that is unlikely to be true. We are intelligent enough to be curious about the racial dynamics of a place prior to us traveling there and for good reason. It seems like you may be proud of your country and you may want to make it look like it's not a racist place. There are beautiful things, people, cultures, knowledges, etc. in Mexico like there are in the U.S., like there are in Guatemala. That said, I usually remind folks of this next quote in the context of the U.S., but I think it may apply here too. Malcolm X said, you're not to be so blind with patriotism that you can't face reality. Like the U.S., Mexico is a nation state. It's a colonial enterprise that was founded through unethical means. We have to contend with this because if you love Mexico, how could you work to improve it if you turn your gaze away from its issues? Just something to think about. I intended this to be a constructive addition to the conversation you have opened for us. Because they're actual Africans. They're like actual animal chimps. <laughs> And they, they don't care. 30 St. Petersburg, Florida? Mm. Does that ring a bell? Oh. <laughs> Damn, it sounds like a library in this bitch. What's going on? You sitting there all quiet like a church mouse, dog. God damn. What was that you were saying? <clears throat> See, I bet you didn't wake up this morning thinking a chick was going to do that to your ass now, did you? Mm. Now, let me ask you another question. Who is ma- is that you? Oh, he got his whole life. Don't tell me that's you, big dog. Not like this. You don't look like a to me. Usually, are nice people. You look more like a Ryan. You know, you Ryans are hateful people. <laughs> My bad. I just want a piece. You're really gonna ruin a 14 year old's life over. Oh, no, nah, don't do this. Now. You know, don't play the victim. Listen to me carefully, you fucking recessive chromosome. Okay, don't play the victim now. You know exactly what. Now, didn't I say a couple videos ago? Since we delineated, the tether's starting to have the end fight. They're infighting. See, they've been able to focus on us as a collective. Now that we've delineated, we pull back and say, eh, I'm cool. You're going to hold your own nuts. That tribalism, it can't help. They can't help themselves. They can't help it. They are tethers. They fighting anywhere they can. <laughs> they can't help it. We pull back. And now they, oh, it's your fault. See, it's the, it's the uh, uh, Sudanese. It's, it's the, no, it's the Ethiopians. No, it's the Ghanaians. It's, and that's what kept us running around in circles. And I'm so glad we've delineated. Be one family. If you're this color on TikTok, I want you to log out, create a burner TikTok account, and go look at your FYP page. I want you to look at the stuff that they show of black people. Like, all that classy, super sophisticated, well curated, black content that you would like to see going up and down your feed, you will never see that on the FYP of a brand new TikTok page just created. Take this as a social experiment. Create a brand new TikTok account and go look at what they put on your FYP page. I just find it real weird and funny how white people will criticize the hell out of black people. Like, it always be some type of stereotypical stuff. And I really realize that it's really hate. They will make fun of us for liking fried chicken and watermelon. Like, they don't eat raisin canes and wing stop. According to the grocery stores, that's the number one bought meat in the fucking country. And I feel like y'all do that because y'all don't have a culture of y'all own. If y'all knew how to season meat and fry it, y'all will be eating the shit too. Fried chicken ain't the only thing pe black people like. But what's wrong with it though? That's that's like me criticizing Hispanics for eating tacos. It's a part of their culture and y'all don't have one. All y'all know how to do is change things and put, add casserole to the end. Add uh, fucking cranberries in your salads. Y'all don't have a fucking culture and y'all criticize black people for having a culture. Y'all y'all criticize black people for the creative names they come out with and y'all try to label it as ghetto because all y'all got Johns and Marks in your family. I, I realize y'all white people really just hate blacks. We are the dominant race. We are the blueprint. And y'all can't stand it. We the strongest. We the most athletic. Y'all don't like that. So y'all try to find any way to hit us below the belt. Your time is up now. We, we didn't caught on to you.
Your time is up. Y'all excuse my hair because I literally got rained on at church today. But let's have the conversation because I feel like America is supposed to be the dream. America is, is the place that other countries look at um, in high regards as far as finance, finances. Um, everybody wants to come to America and everybody wants to thrive in America. And uh, America is hope to a lot of people, right? What's about Americans? What about the hundreds of thousands of people that live in the United States that are struggling to live? Food is high. Interest rates are high. Homes are high. Um, inflation is whooping people's ass. What about those people? What about the people that's, um, you know, now that Roe versus Wade was overturned, you know, you got to have these babies, whether you want a baby or not. So what about the mother, the single mother that's sitting up here trying to make ends meet by herself because the daddy decided that he's turned away and he's gone wayward and she's stuck having to raise children? How does she live? Rent is $2,000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Like, a loaf of bread now is 5 $6. Let's have a real conversation. How? What, what kickbacks do we as Americans get to be in America? People who run the United States play with my intelligence and tell me that you can't help a veteran that sit up here and serve this country. You can't help him. You can't help a child that's in the hood that don't have no food. But you could send trillions of dollars to another country to help them out. Oh, and that's not talk about how you going to fund the war. Said war that we ain't even asked for. Like, you going to fund this war by adding 23, 24, 25% worth of taxes additional on me. Oh, okay. I'm just supposed to see here and be happy because I'm in the land of the free and the home of the brave <sighs> I said all this to say they got other countries that will accept us they have other countries that will pay us to come to their countries why are we dealing with this it's almost like like when the housing market spiked up y'all remember like apartments used to be affordable they used to be like a thousand dollars or something like that you might have paid a thousand dollars for a three bedroom bedroom y'all remember that it was still housing was still affordable well after what was that 2022 when everything spiked up and uh covid you know everything went through the whole covid thing supply and demand whatever the case may be well, once everything went back to normal, the prices didn't go back to normal. Why? Because they realized that consumers can pay this. So why would they go back down? Yeah, we got to get out. We got to go. Like, if your five-year plan ain't moving out this country, I don't even know. I want more kids. I don't see myself raising my babies, like, in this environment. I don't see myself raising my babies where people push their own agenda off on my baby at school like I really don't have much say so on how I raise my child if I whoop my child they lock me up if I don't whoop my child they lock him up if like come on man it's time to it's time to go we ain't going nowhere we stand ass right here you can leave I think she'll tell them because I think she's in New York listen it's like a New York accent so I think she'll tell them you see how they do? Get a little hard. Flee, flee, flee. Tell the please. Caucasian men love fucked up weed. And here's why. Even down through history, black women have always been known to be women of valor, women of power, women of substance. And considering he wants to top tier black woman, you're the perfect candidate for his narcissistic love. In his mind, you're the runt, the black woman nobody wants, the damsel in distress. So he comes to feed on your insecurities, to keep you in a low state, because that's the only way he feels worthy of you. Because he knows if you knew what Becky and Susie found on their laptop, you wouldn't even give him the time of the day. And considering he knows you trade in cream of wheat for grits, you are the perfect opportunity to flaunt. It's false masculinity, giving you the unnatural parts of a man. Feels good in the moment, but in the end. 
Houston, what the hell y'all got going on? Black cops getting indicted, scammers, thieves, and these last two like tethers. What's going on, h -Town? What's happening? This is the video of the man HPD needs your help in identifying. You can see him picking up a gun and then walking away. Police suspect he's behind at least two disturbing cases that happened earlier this month. In one, investigators say he robbed a woman at gunpoint at this apartment complex on Imperial Valley Drive. They tell us the woman was placed in a headlock to the point where she almost lost consciousness before being sexually assaulted. Houston police also believe he's responsible for a similar incident a few days prior that happened at this apartment complex across the street. We're being told he pointed a gun at a woman before sexually assaulting her. According to data from HPD, there have been at least seven rape cases in the area in the last month. A department spokesperson says they're trying to determine they are connected. We, the jury, find the defendant, Gerald Goins, guilty of felony murder. Flanked by his attorneys, Gerald Goins remained stoic as he was found guilty of felony murder. The man, who spent three decades as a Houston police officer, is tonight a convicted felon in jail. The jurors were polled to make certain their verdicts were unanimous. In the audience, the families of Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle were relieved but held their emotions in check. The jury's verdict, confirmation to them of what they always knew. Their loved ones were not criminal drug dealers. Veteran criminal defense attorney Kent Schaefer says he was happy to see justice prevail. Typically, I'm very sympathetic to defendants because I'm a criminal defense lawyer. So I always understand that there's often a reason why people do the things they do. But for a law enforcement officer who's given a heightened state of credibility within the system, a heightened state of power over the lives of others, to abuse that power to hurt people is just unforgivable. I need the money back because this phone is not real. Let me see. Uh, I don't. I have to go get the money. This that's, this that is a real phone. No, we went to AT and T, and they're behind you, and the police is on the way. So right, I me, get the money back. No. Let me go get the. What's your uh 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 uh. She's behind you. She's behind you. We got you on camera. We got your stuff. Everything. We got everything.